that sort of thing. So I appreciate you all coming today. We are going to start, you've got an agenda in front of you with the introductions. Then Carly, our friend from IU McKinney School, is going to give a presentation about how to get into IU McKinney, what's it like. Uh, and then Professor Maple will facilitate a discussion with our Ball State alumni who are all uh, College of Sciences and Humanities grads. Becca's major was in journalism, which was my minor, so we let her stay. Uh, but she has a minor in sustainability from our college, so she, she's like a two-for-one account. So, um, so today we will have Carly get it started, and then we'll introduce all of our panelists and our facilitator after that. Sounds great. Okay. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. So hi everyone, my name is Carly Meyhofer. I'm the admissions counselor at IU McKinney School of Law um, in Indianapolis. So IU has two law schools. We have McKinney and Indy, and then there's Maurer and Bloomington. We are two separate schools. Um, so if you have interest in Maurer as well, admissions representatives from schools love talking to students and really helping you figure out which law school is the best choice for you. So definitely reach out to any schools that you're interested, their admissions team, they would love to um, answer questions about their specific programs. My information, I have my card on the back table as well as a QR code, a form, if you haven't filled it out and you're interested in our program, definitely stop by there, grab some stuff, fill that out um, before the end of the day today um, to get, then you'll get on our email list and get some info from us. So we're gonna kind of start by just talking about um, IU McKinney in general just our program, what it takes to apply to a law school. Applications for law schools are actually all relatively similar with some small differences. Um, so even if you're thinking about other schools, this will definitely be some really good information for you today. So we're gonna start with our IU McKinney program information. So we have two different programs at IU McKinney. We have a full-time program and we have a part-time program. So for the full-time program, that's a three-year program. <coughs> Um, during that first year, you're really taking kind of all those basic level law courses that everybody's required to take. So things such as civil procedure, um, contracts, torts, all that good stuff. For a pro full-time program, you're kind of on campus Monday through Thursday about 9 to 5. So that first entire year of law school, your schedule is actually made for you. Um, you don't go in and select classes. That's kind of more in your 2L and 3L year. But as a 1L, your schedule is pretty much made, which definitely one of my current students that are here could share a little bit more about that if you have questions. Um, but it's about nine to five, Monday through Thursday, when else don't have Friday classes. With our part-time program, that's a four-year program, so it's actually geared towards people who have full-time jobs. Of course, you definitely can do the, the part-time program, even if you don't have a full-time job, if you wanna take law school, just a little bit of a slower pace. Um, but it is really geared towards people who are thinking about working after undergraduate. So for the part-time program, the schedule is pretty much your entire first year, Monday and Thursday nights, you're on our campus from about 5.30 to 9. Um, so this year we actually just launched kind of a hybrid program. Um, so we're introducing a lot more online classes. For the first year, your classes will be in person, but then like on those nights you're not on campus, you might have assignments due online or you might have readings that you'll have to keep up with. Um, law school is a lot of reading, so typically when students are studying, they're reading. Um, but our part-time program is really great if you're interested in working and going to law school at the same time. It's definitely doable. So then in years two, three, and four, that's really when you can get a lot more specific um, with your degree, and we have a lot of options for experiential learning here at McKinney. So before I kind of get into some of these amazing opportunities that we offer at McKinney, I do want to talk quickly about our dual degree. So if you're interested in another degree on top of a JD, we do have a dual degree program that would allow you to finish um, two degrees in four years, basically. So for example, some students do a JD MBA, that usually would take you five years, we have a program where you can do it in four, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely send me an email and we can chat further. Um, but at McKinney, we offer so many different opportunities for hands-on learning. That first year, it's really class heavy. You're gonna be in classes, you know, kind of nine to five, Monday through Thursday, right? It's that class heavy year. But in years two, three, and four, if you're a part-time student, there's so many opportunities to get out in the field and practice, um, and practice law. So. The nice thing about being in Indianapolis and being the only law school there is that we have so many opportunities right at our doorstep um, for students to really get that hands-on learning. 
So I'm gonna talk about a couple of these little bubbles really quickly. Um, so we do offer pro bono at IU McKinney, lots of opportunity for pro bono being in Indianapolis, being the only law school there. So if you're interested in pro bono, absolutely tons of opportunity for it. We also have 30 plus student organizations. What a student organization is, it's basically a student run club. Um, we have over 30 of them. They do different things from networking to events um, to just kind of getting to know people who might be interested in similar things that you are. So really some awesome opportunities there. I'm gonna kind of jump ahead. Um, we also have moot court at IU McKinney, uh, which is not mock trial, it's different. It's appellate cases, uh, we have a competition. I think it's something like 76% of our students at some point in their three years participate in moot court. Um, so it's definitely a really great opportunity to get that lawyering practice. We also have eight research centers and programs. So if you're interested in research, that's something we have a lot of opportunity for. Um, so one of kind of our bigger experiential learning uh, opportunities is a clinic. So we have 10 different clinics, and what a clinic basically is, is it's you practicing law, you're representing clients, of course under a professor's license. They don't just like throw you in a courtroom and expect you to be able to represent people um, by yourself. But we have 10 different ones. Some of our most popular range from IP law to child advocacy to wrongful conviction. Um, so lots of really amazing hands-on opportunities there. Then we have 15 plus simulation courses. These are classes that actually simulate things that you're gonna be doing day one as an attorney. So for example, contract drafting, right? It's gonna be something that when, I'm not a JD, so JDs can vouch for this, that probably day one, you're gonna kind of be expected to know how to do. Um, so we offer classes to kind of prepare you for those things that you're gonna be doing day one. And then finally, um, one of our biggest and most amazing opportunities um, is our externship. So I'm gonna jump to our location page because I think it's really important to the amazing opportunities that we offer in terms of, in terms of externships. So what an externship is, is it's basically an internship for course credit. So um, we have over 100 different externships, um, ranging from externships with places like Eli Lilly, a big pharmaceutical company, to externships with the NCAA, to externships with the Marion County Prosecutor's Office, really so many opportunities um, in many, many different types of law. So this is because of our location. We're the only school, as I said, in Indianapolis. So we are very, very connected to the city. Um, and any kind of opportunity you're looking for is definitely probably a possibility. We're also connected to bar and professional organizations in the city. Um, and of course, networking is really big. So I have a couple graphics here. Um, that I think are really important. So 93% of our 2022 graduates were employed after 10 months of graduation. So this is a little figure of I Indiana. Um, of course, we're very connected in Indiana. Over half of the practicing attorneys in Indiana are McKinney alums. It's kind of a fun fact for you. Um, but we're really connected with in, in Indiana, very strong alumni network. But if you're kind of thinking to yourself, like, I don't know if I want to stay in Indiana forever. I want to, you know, get my JD, but who knows where I'll end up. Um, we have a very strong alumni network across the United States. So our department who works with our alumni, um, they're constantly making new connections with alumni in different cities to get students connected with them. Um, so Indiana is also part of the Uniform Bar. So the Uniform Bar is accepted in 41 states. So if you were to bar in Indiana, right, which is what we prepare you for. We prepare you in law school for the uniform bar. Um, if you bar in Indiana and wanted to move to one of those other states, you wouldn't necessarily have to retake the bar as long as you meet those qualifications. So it's definitely a really nice thing and I think contributes to our really awesome alumni network. So this is a little bit of our class profile. I put an arrow to some of our important statistics that I like to point out to students. So our median LSAT is a 155 um, and our median GPA is a 3.6. Now people get really nervous with these numbers. It is not the end all be all of your application. Um, but I do suggest any law school that you're kind of interested in, definitely check out these medians because it's just good information to kind of know. Alrighty, so financing your legal education. So at IU McKinney, we offer a lot of different scholarships for our students. So this is a smaller list. Um, of some of the scholarships the, that we offer. So first and most importantly, we offer merit-based scholarships. These are scholarships that you are automatically considered for based on your initial application. So you do not have to do any extra work 
the only thing you do have to do to be considered is apply by March 1st. That date has not changed in many, many years. I don't see it changing in the foreseeable future. So for example, if you're a junior right right now and you're thinking about you know, your senior year, applying to law schools, that March 1st of your senior year would be when you would want to get your application in to be considered for merit-based scholarships. So we also have donor-funded scholarships, which are scholarships that you can apply for. So we have over 50 donor-funded scholarships. Um, there's only one application for them, which is really nice, and then our committee meets tries to best match people with scholarships that kind of fit them. You, there's not an de application deadline for donor-funded scholarships. You can apply at any point, apply for those at any point as well. So then we also have a Kennedy Scholar Award. So this is awarded to two students. Um, it is a full tuition scholarship with a living stipend. The qualifications are a 3.65 GPA and a 162 LSAT. If you meet those requirements, you'll just automatically get contacted by our offices um, to see if you're interested in coming for an interview. You do have to apply by February 1st for the Kennedy Scholar. Um, so if you're kind of thinking about that, February 1st is the deadline to be considered. We also offer non-resident tuition discounts. So if you're an out-of-state student from like basically the Midwest, um, you wouldn't necessarily pay the full out-of-state tuition. Uh, we also have an amazing program in Indiana called the iCleo program. So this is for anyone who is attending an Indiana law school, not just McKinney, um, but its purpose is to kind of diversify the legal profession. So it's a summer program, I believe it's six weeks, right before you start law school, but it also comes with a $9,000 scholarship a year um, and really great networking opportunities. So it's a really great program if that sounds like something of interest to you. And of course, FAFSA financial aid that lovely document that you will probably have to fill out go to school. So then, um, one of our kind of more important um, scholarships that I want to talk about while I'm here is our Law Scholar Award. So this is about a half tuition scholarship. Um, we have lots of different invites to networking events in the city. So along with the scholarship, it comes with a lot of networking with alumni, with law firms, um, and some really great events while you're in law school. So typically, we're kind of looking for a 3.5 GPA and a 155 LSAT. Your pre-law advisor um, will basically nominate you. To be considered for this, you do have to apply by March 1st as well. So that March 1st deadline is pretty important. Um, lots of other schools, those deadlines are important. They look relatively similar from school to school, but definitely look into scholarships that schools offer and make sure you know those deadlines. But Ball State is one of our schools. Uh, we will have two students from Ball State who received this award, um, so definitely something to kind of think about as you're thinking about law school. Alrighty, so our application checklist. So um, your online application is through LSAC. LSAC is the place where you go to register for the LSAT. Um, it's the place where you go to fill out your application. So it's kind of the one-stop shop that at any point in undergrad, I would definitely make an account on lsac.org. Um, it's not too early to make an account on there to kind of stay in the know of what's going on with law school admissions. So a lot of your things that you'll need to submit are things you would maybe expect. So you'll have to submit your undergraduate transcripts, of course, any other graduate school transcripts that you have. Um, you'll have to take the LSAT. We also accept the GRE. Um, I would recommend the LSAT just because it is that law school admissions test. So we do recommend the LSAT, but we also accept the GRE, which we'll talk about LSAT really quick in a minute. Um, and you also do need two letters of recommendation. Letters of recommendation, you can be thinking about now. We've had people who, as freshmen, made connections with people in school and have stayed with those connections, and those people were able to write a really good letter of recommendation. So it's not too early in undergrad to be thinking about Maybe what professors, what advisors do you have strong relationships with that can really say good things about you? So then we have some statements of motivations and goals. This is new this year for IU McKinney. This is our personal statement. So this is where we're going to differ probably from other schools. So all of these three things, transcripts, LSAT score, letters of rec, those are in something called a CAPS report. Basically LSAC just makes that report and you send it to all the schools that you want to apply to. So then in our specific application, we changed our personal statement to be three direct questions. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about them today just for time's sake, um, but definitely as you're on individual schools applications, look for those small differences. Usually you'll find them in that personal statement section, um, but it is not the best look. This is my small tip. 
when you submit an application to a school and it says the wrong school's name in the statement. It sounds small, but it does happen. So just be double checking those little discrepancies. You just wanna be sure you're kind of on top of those small things that you have control over. Um, so then at the end, there's a couple optional statements um, on applications. Most schools have optional statements ranging from you know, an academic statement to a diversity statement to lots of different things. Um, and then finally, you'll have a resume that you have to submit. The nice thing is there's no specific type of resume for an application. Just any resume that you have, I am sure Ball State has a resume service. Use that. I still use my resume from IU Bloomington that someone helped me create. I just go and edit that as I go. So definitely use that service to look at your resume, help you make it you know, look nice. Um, take advantage of that while you're an undergrad. And then finally, um, admissions is rolling. I have not met anyone from a law school in all my recruiting time when I've talked to other law schools where admissions is not rolling. So as applications are coming in, we're accepting people. So we always suggest get your application in as early as possible. Um, the application is actually open. Hold on, I have a slide. There we go. The application is open for a very long time. So it's open from September all the way till May. You do not have to submit your application like the day it opens in September. That's not what I mean by trying to get it in early. But my recommendation is usually if you can have it in by Thanksgiving or the first of the year, that's a pretty good place to kind of, in terms of time, have your application in. So just to jump into some deadline things here so we can kind of wrap up and keep moving. Um, our application opens in September. It was the 15th this year. It will probably be September 1st for 2025. So in September of 2024, this coming September, it will most likely be September 1st that it opens. That's very similar to lots of other law schools as well. November 15th is our application deadline for early decision. So if you're like, yes, Carly convinced me, IU McKinney is the place I wanna go, um, you can submit by November 15th to do early decision. You don't have to select early decision if you apply before then. Um, but it basically just guarantees a decision by the first of the year, um, and you would have to retract any other law school applications that you have. So it's kind of binding. February 1st is the deadline consideration for that Kennedy Scholar Award, which is that full tuition. March 1st is that really important date, that priority deadline to you'll receive your decision by May 15th if you submit by then. Um, but also you'll be considered for those merit-based and that law scholar, which is that partnership scholarship that we talked about. So that's that deadline. And then finally, our application deadline is May 15th. So just some things I kind of recommend as you're, you know, going through school, thinking about is, you know, a JD something I want to look into for my future law school? Is this going to be something I want to do? Um, definitely create an account on LSAC, even if it's something you're thinking about. Come to events like this. Right? This is the place where you learn about the job and what people actually do in the schools um, and all that good information. So you're already off to a great start. So that's really great. Um, think about the LSAT. I kind of recommend, I didn't go into too much detail about it. I recommend taking it. So for example, if you're a junior, I would recommend taking it the summer after your junior year. Which I know I talked to a few people who kind of said that that's what they were thinking. That way when the application opens in September, one, if you like your score, Great, you're ready to apply, you don't have to worry about it. And two, if you're like, I wanna take it again, it still gives you time at the beginning of the cycle when the application opens, where it wouldn't be like super, super late into you know the application cycle to retake it. So that's my recommendation of kind of when to take the LSAT. And then finally, think about those recommenders. That's something you can do early on. Who in your undergraduate life are you, do you have a strong connection with that you think could write you a really strong letter of recommendation? Um, and definitely reach out to admissions people for schools that you're looking at. Again, as I was saying, we in our office love talking to students. We love helping answer your questions, helping you figure out what you really want to do. So any school that you're interested in, reach out with questions. Alrighty, that is all I have for everyone. I'm going to get out of the way. And then we'll do questions at the end. Yes, that's perfect. That work? Yep, that's great. Okay. Feel free at the end to kind of come and see me at my table. I'll hang out for a bit. I have a couple of students here, so feel free to come see me if you have any questions. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Carly, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. And then we'll... And Adam, I'll have you... Uh, I'll just get over here. <laughs> Whichever way. 
Do you want us to make this closer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Carly. I really appreciate it. Kind of makes me want to apply to the grad school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Uh, <laughs> at this point, my I did. I have a poli sci major. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. My goal was to be the first female governor for the state of Indiana. And then I got the book that studied for the law school, it was the LSAT. And I got through about the first three sections of it. And I was like, hmm. I don't like conflict. <laughs> I don't want to argue for a living, get paid to argue. I just want to write you along. So I did not go to law school. I went to the University of Kentucky and got my MPA. And so when Carly talked about you were able to do those dual programs, um, I, those can be a really great bang for your buck if you're thinking you want to be practicing specific <coughs> law or specific science. Um, so public sector folks, you know, governmental, you would look at you know the MPA with the JD. So we have Professor Maple with us today. How many of you had Professor Maple in class? So you have her name, you know, you get credit for being interested. <laughs> Good choice. Um, so uh, Professor Maple attended Indiana University of Indianapolis for her undergrad, and then went to uh, Indiana University Bloomington, which is now the Maurer School of Law. And she has a lot of experience, for those of you who don't know her, a lot of experience as an attorney practicing before she came here to Ball State to teach. She worked as a law clerk at the United States Federal Magistrate Judge, or to a judge, uh, the United States Federal Magistrate. Uh, she was a trial attorney with the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and then finally served as an administrative judge for the EEOC. Um, and she's always really been interested in teaching, and so COVID, all of that happened, gave lots of people time to reflect on what they want to do with their lives and their careers. And about the same time, we had this magical opening for an assistant teaching professor focusing in the uh, legal studies law related courses here in the Department of Political Science. So, great fit. This is our fifth year teaching. She loves working with the bright, hardworking students we have here at Ball State. And she's also now the pre law advisor. So, even if you're not a legal studies major uh, or a political science major, you can come and talk to. This is your, this should become your new best friend in terms of helping you navigate because she's got a lot of experience um, and she's also the coach for the mock trial team. Any mock trial? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in general, I think we're trying to really focus on how do we make a law career in law school accessible to all students. So Professor Maple is our rock star here at Penn State, so she's going to facilitate for us. And then we have, you have the bios in front of you um, for all of our five panelists. And so you can read all of them, but as I said, they're all um, McKinney School law graduates, or our last two on your left would be our current students. This time last year, Matthew Grasso was attending this event and keeping his fingers. Did you know you got into McKinney? Uh, yeah, I was yeah, you waiting. were waiting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Becca was a 1L last year, so now she's a seasoned, I said she looks older, and I think it's because she looks wiser, because she's had a whole other year of law school education by her. But you can read about all their experience, their education, um, those panelists, and I really appreciate you being, we have very young, I think y'all are very young, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean obviously Becca and Matthew are really young, um, but y'all are very more recent, you know, in the last decade, you've been practicing for how long? Practicing since 2018. Yeah. So yeah, and I think that's really relevant and can help you kind of understand kind of the newer profession of folks as they're getting started. So we'll do this section. There'll be time for Q and A, and I know um, I'll come back up and wrap it up at the end. But we'll uh, Professor Maple will facilitate questions from the panelists, alumni, as well as Carly, and then chit chat at the end, and then cookies, brownies. You must take them home because I don't. I'll turn it over to Professor Maple. Hi guys, thank you all for being here. I want to thank the panel. This is so such a great opportunity for our students who are thinking about law school and thinking about McKinney to be able to hear from you firsthand um, your experiences. So I really, I really appreciate that you all come. Um, guys, if you haven't had any refreshments, I will not be offended. No one will be offended if you grab some while we're talking. So please uh, feel free to do that. Um, I, as you heard from. Uh, um, Dr. Stevens' uh, introduction. I did not attend McKinney, but I can tell you, having been an attorney for 22 years in Indianapolis, 
I had lots of colleagues who attended McKinney. I had lots of opposing counsel who attended McKinney. And I had, um, when I was an administrative judge, I had a lot of McKinney um, graduates who appeared before me as attorneys. So I have huge respect for this law school um, and, and, and the kind of attorneys that they uh, uh, put out or turn out. So um, I want to first just want to start with that. Thank you. So now I wanted to ask some questions that can let you guys hear about um, all of the experiences that these uh, panelists bring to, to you to share with you. So um, first of all, since you all attended Ball State, just remind us your name, your undergraduate major, and what was your favorite class at Ball State? I'll start with, uh, I'll start with you, Adam. Uh, my name is Adam Strand, and my undergraduate degrees, I was legal studies and had a second major in business administration, two minors in criminal justice and political science. And then my favorite you said class? Favorite class. Favorite class I probably took was probably, it sounds weird, but it was probably economics, micro and macro in a business college. Just, I really enjoyed it. Just, it was challenging and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Great. Cheyenne? Um, I am Cheyenne Boyer. Um, I, my undergrad majors, let me think of all three of them. Pre-law, legal studies, criminal justice, and criminology. Um, and I had a minor in social work. My goal was to be a prosecutor, uh, if you didn't know by just the majors. Uh, my favorite Ball State class would have been Professor Gideon's appellate mock trial class. I don't remember which class that was specifically, but we did a mock trial uh, and an appellate brief in that class. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Abby Neely. Um, I was just a legal studies major. I think I had an econ minor, but I don't think I finished it. Um, it's, we're fine. And <laughs> I would say, gosh, there are so many good classes in, I was the business like concentration, so I did a lot outside of the school as well. But I mean, I think that class was great. We did family law, contracts, um, yeah, really anything that you can get some hands-on knowledge from was awesome. Um, I'm Becca Porter. Um, I'm a TL at McKinney this year, and I decided pretty late into my undergraduate career that I wanted to go to law school. Um, and I also was enjoying my major that I had already decided on, which was journalism. So I stuck with that path. Um, hearing some of your guys' favorite classes, and I'm like, oh, that would have been really nice to have taken those classes in undergrad. Um, but with that being said, I would say that my favorite class probably was for my minor, which was sustainability. Um, I took a class with Dr. Adam Cuban where we created a book. Um, we spent the semester um, writing a book, making the graphics for the book, and it was eventually published and I think you can buy it on Amazon, um, but it's called Facing Sustainability, and it was just a very cool project-focused class that those experiences stuck with me. So that sounds great. <laughs> I'm, I'm Matthew Grosso, I'm a 1L. <clears throat> um, I have two favorite classes, and mine was also Professor Gideon's class because it was more practical, it was hands-on. Um, Right now, I'm getting ready to do my appellate brief and do my oral argument, so I have a little bit of a head start with some of my classmates because I've done that before. So it's still stressful, but not, not as bad. And then my second one was Professor Maple's admin law class because her experience in the EEOC, it, kind of, it was really cool to kind of hear her perspective from it. So. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for compliments there. But it was, it was <laughs> all right, well, wonderful. What did, drew you to a career as attorney? I want to start with Cheyenne this time. Oh, goodness. Um, I was eight and said I wanted to be a lawyer, and I heard a lot of people say, oh, you know, you won't, you won't do that. Um, and I grew up in a uh, smaller class, you know, family home, and people didn't think that I would become an attorney, and I just stuck my mind to it, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. Again, I wanted to be a prosecutor, and it changed as I developed through Ball State and then even into law school, but um, there was just no stopping me on the, the legal career path. I think mine kind of started the same. I was really good at arguing as a child. <laughs> you can ask my parents. Um, but it turned into wanting to help people, uh, and I figured this was a good way to do it. Um, and even at Ball State, honestly, I wasn't convinced if I wanted to be an attorney. I was a journalism major, um, and I called my dad and I was like, there's this thing you can do that like you could be a paralegal, great fallback, but like maybe I want to go to law school. 
Um, and by the end, I was convinced that I wanted to go to law school, and I'm really happy I did. But it's a great, like, I think without legal studies, I don't know if I would have done it, just because I was not sure until, until it was almost time to go. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, with my journalism major, I had a concentration in magazine, um, and I wrote for Ball Bearings here at Ball State, um, and I loved the stories that I got to work on, um, and I found myself like in the community, learning about people and their experiences and writing their stories, and although I loved the work that I was doing, I think I hit a point where I realized that it wasn't what I wanted to do forever, um, and I loved learning about people in their lives, but I wanted to like help them in a more concrete way. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the first two years of undergrad reflecting on like other possible careers and how I could do that. Um, and becoming an attorney just seemed like a very concrete way to get more involved in life, the lives of people and make a difference instead of just getting to write their stories. Now I can actually help them. So I knew I wanted to go to law school <clears throat> when I was nine, and I have absolutely no interest in working in criminal law, but I knew I wanted to go when the Casey Anthony trial was going on, because most nine-year-olds aren't paying attention to the news, but my parents were really big into it, so I followed that entire trial, and I believe it was July is when the verdict came. Uh, super, got me super interested into it, um, and then I, when I was at Ball State, I had the opportunity to intern at a, at a law firm downtown Muncie. Um, it was a great experience, which I, I suggest to you all if you're interested. That, I mean, you're only going to know if you if you go and, and try it yourself. Um, so, much like they said, the focus there was mainly family law. So, being able to to see help people that can't help themselves was super super cool. And what drew you along? Uh, it's a combination of things. One, I might just consult with my dad. He kind of the individual to go to college and it's on his dime. You better know what you want to do. Otherwise, it's kind of that situation. And I thought I'm, I wanted to go somewhere in a business and talking with a couple people in high school, and business owners, they always said the best people they deal with are business owners who have JDs and are crap attorneys on the side. And in high school, uh, just job shadowed a couple of attorneys who mentored me in the Ball State when I had my internship through them. And I think it was those two things. I was, it was that coupled with either going into dentistry school, but I can't stand blood. So <laughs> I definitely did not do that. Matthew, is that part of your yeah, decision right. too? Yeah, no, Matthew's no. dad is a dentist, so <laughs> I knew he was decided not to do that. Okay. Um, how did your major help you prepare for law school? Me? Okay. Um, yes, I, I think. Abby, thank you. Yeah, I think um, my major, and I also uh, was like a runner at a law firm in my hometown yeah. each summer. I think just like. I mean, a lot of the poli sci majors and stuff like that, I, I didn't think had as much hands on experience as we did, just because like they're learning how to be a paralegal, which is again more just realistic stuff. Um, so, I mean, we had done an appellate brief, we had done um, a mock trial. I remember objecting so much, getting yelled and said, Stop. <laughs> so, we learned some things there. Um, but I, I just, you know, knowing what a case number was, like some people didn't, I don't think, at, at the beginning. Uh, and so, just they understood that like law school is a lot about learning how to think about the law and not necessarily as much practicing the law um, and so when those combined it made it easier to understand because you could put it in a, a real world situation so i appreciated that all right becca um, I was the one who did not know what a case number was, um, and I did I did kind of go into law school blind because I hadn't taken any pre-law classes really um, in undergrad, um, so that was like scary, but if you're in that same boat, just know that like I'm making it and you're going to be okay, but all of you in this room are probably in a better position starting off than I was, but with that being said, I definitely think that my writing skills have transferred over very well to law school. If you hate writing, I'm just going to warn you right now, you're in for a whirlwind because you're going to do a lot of it um, in law school and from what I've heard in practice as well, oftentimes. Um, so I would say definitely my writing skills, of course it's a different type of writing, so that was a bit of an adjustment, but just being used to writing well and succinctly and accurately and citations are a pretty big deal in the legal world and I had a lot of practice with that in journalism, so yeah, I would say my writing skills. So 
for my, I double majored, for my political science major, they made me have an internship not in a law firm. <clears throat> so I was able to intern at the town of Georgetown, so I got some experience on the government side to see how things worked over there. And then through my uh, legal studies major, I interned at the, at the law firm downtown. Um, so having those majors, that helped a lot, kind of get my feet wet and to actually experience it. Uh, but from a class standpoint, uh, I had a huge fear of being cold called. I, I did. <laughs> so Professor Maple, <laughs> uh, it, the class runs very similarly. So that was nice. Um, but if students were not going to answer her questions, she was like, guys, I'm going to start calling on you. So it really made you read the material and know it. So that was super, super beneficial, I thought. And Adam, what about your um, business major in addition to your? A business major, I would say, so it's two lines of thinking. That business, I think, is relatively different than uh, legal studies. Legal studies, for example, kind of open up my mind to think about different positions and have just an open discussion and how does that correlate to law school is when you get cold call, you're probably going to have other positions. Will the professor try to throw you off possibly, like what happened to me my first time when I broke out in a sweat. But, uh, and just like everyone else has said, getting your feet wet and also it's a big decision to go to law school. So when you actually get the intern with, at a law firm and see how the day to day goes, that's great insight. Uh, for business, I would say uh, I originally went to McKinney for the four-year uh, JD MBA. Uh, after my first year, I was a little burnt out, so I just decided to go to JD. But that was originally, I would say, how it is applicable to prepare me for law school. Uh, I had to be pretty disciplined, and keep my GPA up, and uh, it was very challenging statistics, so I'd say it pushed my boundaries compared to high school of how I prepared, studied, took notes, and uh, that's a big one is note-taking in law school. You become friends uh, with a lot of your law school mates and exchange outlines, finalize them, because that's a big, big thing for uh, finals in law school is having your outlines uh, completely together, and I would say legal studies is the same way. If you come in and take good notes, like during class, it correlate correctly together. Thank you. I'm going to throw this out to everybody so you can just answer in whatever order you want. Um, what clubs or organizations or activities did you do when you were at Ball State that might have helped you prepare for law school and becoming an attorney? I don't know if this kind of counts, but internships, I've heard it a couple of times, but just internships and getting yourself out there. Um, I was on the bowling uh, team uh, at Ball State, and uh, just the leadership role with on, within the bowling team was helpful, and managing schedules and you know people and everything that comes with that. It's a time management thing, especially in law school and in the practice, is just making sure that you're on top of everything that's happening and things get busy, and so just managing your work, your, your caseload, your workload, uh, your uh, school load, and any organizations that you're in is really helpful to prepare yourself. I was on the uh, conduct board, um, and so that was like a little fake, not fake, but mock, um, you know, you throw the book at people, and I always wanted to throw the book at people. Um, <laughs> I've learned to up the best option, usually. Um, and then I was on RHA, too, which taught a little bit of parliamentary procedure um, and things like that, voting, and, and getting your point across in a succinct way and like getting people on your side. Um, so I thought those were helpful to me. Anybody else have an activity or organization you were involved in that would be helpful in preparing? Um, I was just going to say that echo Cheyenne's point. I think it's less about like the organization you join and more about just learning how to get involved and how to dedicate yourself to something. Um, I was editor in chief of Ball Bearings my senior year, and I had to be very organized and I had to learn how to manage people, which I felt like too young to be trying to do that and a lot of those people were my friends but the reality is when you get to law school and beyond you're going to have to be comfortable taking on a role where you're asking people where you're delegating work um so just anytime you can put yourself in a position to be uncomfortable i would recommend doing it <laughs> i would say for me uh there's a stigma to it but i was in a fraternity here at ball State. i was in sig uh, i was uh vice I'd say VP of recruitment, and then I was also uh, vice president. How that correlates into law school, I don't know what the application, like, when I 
quantified what weight they gave that, but how it correlated into really for me, for law school, it, I'd piggyback off the other people, was managing your time, I had to manage people. Uh, and really, to me, I look back at it now, and I look at the events I'd go through. We went to Chicago, Texas, with different events. With uh, Oz Nelson was an alumni here, I met him. He was uh, the CEO of UPS, for example. We got to correlate with them, and uh, why that really goes to when you start practicing law is being comfortable if you want to be in a courtroom, thinking how, you know, talking to people, relating how you're going, positions, and uh, once you get in the field, it, it was extremely beneficial just because it pushed my boundaries, and that's really why I wanted to be a trial attorney, is it confronts my fear, uh, fear of being judged by a bunch of juries, and it's one of those weird things that I oddly just get the adrenaline rush, but that was an organization. I look back at it now that we prepare for that, and I'd say just yeah, Well, thank you. That leadership opportunity, I'm sure, helped. Um, here's the question I think Carly, Carly will love. What made you choose IU McKinney? Whoever wants to. Uh, um, I knew from the moment I wanted to go to law school, I wanted to go to IU McKinney. Um, being in a capital city is so beneficial. As, as she said, there's so many opportunities, but some things that, there's three law schools in Indiana, Notre Dame and IU, IU Mauer and IU McKinney. What we, what we have because of our location that they can't have, we're literally a football field's length away from the Indiana Supreme Court, um, the federal courts downtown too, so. You wouldn't believe it, but just walking in the law school on a random Tuesday, you will see the Chief Justice of the Indian Supreme Court just hanging out. Um, so I thought location, location, location for me. What about you, Cheyenne? I echo that. Um, as you said, there's two others, and I you know, thought of two others. I was always told, you want to go to law school or you want to practice, and I ended up wanting to be in Indiana. Uh, so IU McKinney was just the location of being able to get out. And again, I wanted to be a prosecutor. I'm going to keep going back to that because that really drove my decisions. And uh, being in Indianapolis, being a prosecutor in Marion County was what I wanted to do and be in the big city. Um, I'm now in Noblesville and not a prosecutor, but it's just the network at IU McKinney is so different. I'm assuming from Mauer or from Notre Dame of just being able to meet your friends. Abby and I went to Ball State together. We saw each other at IU McKinney. We still communicate. I talk to a lot of my classmates on a daily basis. I run into opposing counsel and they're my classmates. Um, I was always told be nice to your classmates and that's a, another good reminder. Be nice to your classmates because they're going to either be on the opposing side or maybe even in the same firm with you. Um, or so, judge, or judge. eventually you judge. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, your guardian ad litem, your other other folks that you work with on a daily basis are going to be your classmates and your friends and um, maybe even enemies uh, if you think about it like that. But location was big for me and I knew that Marion County, Hamilton County was where I wanted to end up and that's why I chose the thing. Abby? Um, I, so I applied to, I think, Michigan State, but then I didn't really want to end up in Michigan. Um, and honestly, like, the scholarship opportunity was the best at McKinney. Um, and I was, you know, I, we didn't have a ton of money, so I was like, what is fiscally the most responsible thing to do? Um, so that helped, I think. And, and like everyone else has said, I think there's just tons of opportunities, tons of firms. Um, and just, you know, when you're 23, being in the big city, it is kind of cool. So, yeah, all kinds of things. I definitely agree with location and scholarship was a big deal to me too. McKinney has a lot of fantastic scholarship opportunities that if you're interested in McKinney, you should definitely try to take advantage of. Um, but I would also say I did do like some prospective student events and admitted student events and just the welcoming atmosphere at McKinney was a huge deal for me. Um, once I saw how kind and accepting everybody was, um, which I like don't have any family members who went to law school, so I always thought it was the stereotypical like cold competitive atmosphere um and that has not been my experience at all at mckinney so once i realized that was the vibe that's where i wanted to go and what brought you to mckinney uh, several factors to the joint mba uh one my best man at my wedding and i consider still my best friend right now i 
<clears throat> he was in the legal studies program. He was a grade below me as I graduated in December 2014. But so we were both starting the <clears throat> following fall. We both wanted to go to McKinney. Uh, so it was being able to have a roommate and uh, also I have older parents, so it was location. Uh, and at the time, the construction, uh, I looked at Maurer and uh, really wanted to go to IU. My dad went to IU, uh, Bloomington, but the construction through Martinsville and what have you, just for internships, I didn't want to make that drive. So it gets back to location. And uh... Thank you. Now, is there anything that knowing what you know now, you would have done differently as an undergraduate or maybe as a 1L? Um, don't do what I did. Um, I, I set high expectations for myself on the LSAT, and I, I took it the first time, and it was a fine score, but I, I thought, I was like, oh, I have to cancel this score. Um, I did that. I bet on myself, took it the second time, and did a little worse, actually, so had to take it a third time, and that's why when I was at this event last year, I, I had applied by that March 1st deadline, um, and I think they got back with me in two weeks, so literally the anniversary's coming up, it has to be sometime <laughs> next week, but, um, so I would plan early and don't cancel your LSAT score, even if you think it's bad, it's, it's not the end of the world. Excellent advice. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I remember Matthew when you were waiting and you weren't telling me anything. Yeah. I kept thinking, mm, yep. he needs to be telling me something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so exciting. Okay. I'll piggyback a little bit off of that. I think these events, we didn't have this specific event, but going to more of these, talking to more attorneys or more people in the profession that you want to join just so you can get a better understanding of it, uh, be prepared for what that looks like. Piggybacking off of that, don't put too much pressure on yourself. My LSAT score was not the greatest. My GPA was fine. I got into McKinney, did great in McKinney. The LSAT score is important to, for the application purposes and to get into law school. It will not follow you through it. Um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself uh, with the LSAT score GPA. Still apply to law school, even if you think that it's not the greatest, apply. You'll get in and you'll get in somewhere or wherever you want to go and keep trying and just don't weigh it down on yourself. And I would say um, I was not a good test taker, so I knew the higher GPA I had, the like the less pressure I had to put on myself for my LSAT. So um, I had a really good GPA at Ball State, and my LSAT score was just okay. Um, and it still led me to many opportunities. Um, so I think like think about your own strengths. And I did apply really early, and I do think that's why I got the scholarship that I did, because um, I think I knew by December. Mm -hmm. So if you're sure, go for it. So you know the worst you can do is change your mind, but at least you have that opportunity. Becca, is there anything you would do differently your first year or undergrad? Um, I would say when it comes to your first year, like I know this is probably really vague advice, but just try not to put so much pressure on yourself. Try to find some sort of outlet that helps you relieve a little bit of stress. It's hard in your first year not to have like tunnel vision, like all you think about, all you do, the only people you hang out with, like, it's all law school all the time. If you can find a way to sort of connect with the real world every once in a while, I would recommend doing that because it does like it can wear you down really fast if you don't allow yourself a little bit of time and a little bit of grace and I promise it'll work out if you take an hour or two away. That was good advice. And yeah. sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep is important. Have non law school friends yeah. that don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Adam. Uh, I would say I would have studied harder or I would say longer and a little bit more in depth for the LSAT. Uh, I was pretty busy, and I worked with Professor Gideon on the logic games. I don't know if they're on LSAT anymore, but uh, through June, after June, no more logic games. Yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> so I worked really hard with Professor Gideon, and it was great to work with on that. But uh, I took my first time at IU Bloomington, and uh, then took it a second time Burkhart, and uh, I definitely would have buckled down a little bit more. Just to have a little bit more scholarship money. Law school is pretty expensive. It's just the reality of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I would just like to come out of law school with a little bit less debt, and I kind of correlate mm -hmm. that to having a better LSAT score with the possibility of uh, more scholarship. Uh, but as for classes and everything else such as that, I don't have any regrets or anything. I would change different. So Adam, did you, do you have any tri tips or tricks um, 
about how to survive and thrive in law school? How to survive, survive in law school? Uh, and thrive. And thrive. <laughs> so law school, your first year is the hardest year, in my opinion, the second, third year. Uh, but getting through your first year is the toughest aspect of it. To definitely meet your classmates. Uh, but mine was going to the gym, you know, in the evenings or in the mornings, and uh, honestly, how to survive, yes, have good outlets, get enough sleep. Uh, everyone survives it, for the most part. <laughs> if it's what you want to do, there's people that go into law school that don't kind of go there. It's the reality of it. They think they want to go there, but they don't. You'll see it after the first semester. Don't let it scare you. Uh, but get to know the professors, too. Uh, the professors are great at McKinney. Uh, Professor Sullivan used to be out in the Indiana Supreme Court. I took six of his classes. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's several professors. It, it's just the reality. It's a little different than Ball State. There are professors. Professor Hill is a Civ Pro professor at McKinney, and he would go out and have drinks with his students afterwards. That was pretty cool. Uh, so network with your classmates and uh, she said, honestly, you're going to be practicing against them. And uh, ironically, there's two of my classmates in the legal studies program that I've had jury trials against. And it's slightly awkward because we're friends, but we kind of look at each other like a wink. But uh, the more you network, too, because you may need a job, and that's an opportunity for one of your friends to give a good word for you. That's how it happened with me at law school or my current position I'm at. And uh, it was really beneficial. But there's multiple things you just do. What, you gotta keep yourself sane and find good outlets, and uh, that's everyone has their own thing they can do, but that's what worked for me. Abby and Cheyenne, any tips on surviving and thriving in law school? I had a unique uh, law school experience. I lived in Logan Sport and traveled to Indianapolis every day for law school, so that's about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive one way, so I was on the road a lot. Um, so finding that outlet that everybody keeps talking about was podcasts for me, getting out of the law school world of, um, you know, reading books that were fun to me, um, but also finding your group of friends. Um, you don't have to have a study group per se, but having your group of friends that you could, you know, go to the library with or, you know, go out and have drinks with and kind of, uh, collaborate with what your classes look like, especially in that first year, because you're going to be in a cohort or a class, so you'll have probably A and B if that's still how it works. Um, I haven't been out that long, I guess. Um, so find your group of friends in that first year, and that's kind of who you will grow with in that, in those classes. And then you'll kind of branch out, and you'll find new friends, and you'll, but having those people to talk with and communicate with, um, and find your mentor, whoever that may be. You may have a couple. Um, I always love to mentor younger folks, um, so if that happens to work, um, I don't have business cards, I should have brought those, but just reaching out and asking questions to people who are 2Ls or 3Ls while you're a 1L, that's helpful, and not being scared to just go up and say, hey, I need help, or, or going to people in the admin office and just saying, hey, I need some help, and this is what it is, and they'll, they'll gladly help you. Yeah, I, I don't know if I thrived. <laughs> I did survive though. Um, I had a weird one. Uh, my dad got sick my first year, like the first week of school, and ended up passing away after my first year. And so that was like just an added, you know, fun thing. Um, not fun. Anyway, and then right at the end of my first year, COVID hit, which honestly saved me a little bit, I think. I was kind of, which would be shocking to Professor Grover, I think, um, kind of overwhelmed by the classes and like the people, and, and it just all seemed competitive and, and and I was kind of nervous and, and going online I really think helped me a lot because then it took the pressure of competing and it was just me and me doing what I needed to do um, so COVID in a weird way I think kind of saved me a little bit um, and I do think they offer a lot more online and hybrid classes now yes. um, so I would say like find what works for you if you're better at night take your night classes um, if you have to work do that because uh, that's kind of an outlet as well um, and so yeah I think it's fine what works for you find friends I had friends that like I lived in the apartment complex with me and we just walk our dogs and like not think about it um, we had to get creative during COVID so yeah I think it's, you know yourself the best and do what what works so this question is for the practicing attorneys did any of you end up practicing exactly 
think we, we've already kind of answered this, but mm -hmm. remind us. Um, did any of you go into law school knowing what you were going to practice, and did that change? Two of you have already said that. Definitely <laughs> changed. It definitely yeah. changed. Um, I'm a family law attorney, um, and I don't think I specifically wanted to do that or not. I had worked at, like I said, the same firm that did family, PI, med mal, criminal. Um, I knew there were some things I didn't want to do, but um, I think just personality-wise and honestly, there's so much drama <laughs> in family <laughs> law that it just keeps it interesting, but you're also helping kids and you're helping families. Um, so I'm happy where I am, but I wouldn't have, if you asked me four years ago, would I have guessed that? Probably not. What about you, Adam? So, okay, we're back. Yeah, one ago, yeah. yeah. Well, with prosecutor, I was a deputy prosecutor eventually. I went in thinking I wanted to go into business law, and once I kind of changed my mind, I took an internship at the prosecutor's office, really enjoyed it, and became a certified legal intern. I got to try my third year, 16 jury trials. Uh, it was like major felony, it was the strike division. So, I got to work with FBI, state police, Homeland Security, which was great. Uh, and I realized it's, if that's something I don't want to do the rest of my life, I'm getting the trial experience in the courtroom, how to work up a case head to toe, uh, and I really enjoyed that. And if you want to go into litigation itself, which is what I'm in now, uh, that really prepared me. And uh, also working with victims, that was something that I really enjoyed. I didn't think I was going to enjoy, but uh, that's something where uh, sit on the phone forever on them. I take four or five hours out of my day to speak to a victim. Uh, I found myself enjoying that more than I thought I would. Uh, but just as I want to kind of highlight here, we're all commenting on survival. Law school is challenging. I don't want to take anything away from it, thinking people are intimidated to go. It's a challenge. And once you get through it, you realize you survived. It's a challenge like anything else. It's much more rewarding, especially at the bar exam. Uh, and if it wasn't a challenge, I think it wouldn't be a special when you get through it. And uh, it is a challenge, though. But like anything else, I always find when you succeed or survive it, you have much more sense of accomplishment and uh, you push the boundaries for yourself. And you don't push the boundaries for yourself. Uh, you're just not going to grow as a person or just in any profession you're going to go into. Cheyenne, you knew you wanted to be a prosecutor, and now you're in education law. How did that come about? Um, so I wanted to be a prosecutor just because that's what I grew up doing. I had an internship in high school with a prosecutor. I had an internship then that followed that was with a judge. I worked with that judge all through Ball State. That's where I did my internships for my majors in Ball State. Um, that's where my world was, was just in the courtroom. And coming out of, well, really in my first summer, I knew that Church Church at Antrim was where I wanted to be. Um, and practicing with those attorneys were great, and um, that's what I wanted to, to follow. Um, when I got to my third L year and realized my debt uh, from undergrad and law school, uh, prosecutors don't pay as much as I thought they did. Um, so I started looking at private firms, and I knew I wanted to come back to Church Church Hill and Antrim, pretty much begged for a position, said I wanted to be a litigator, um, and education law is administrative law. Um, we deal a lot with OCR, Office of Civil Rights, sorry, I'm gonna throw a lot of acronyms at you, um, EEOC, um, administrative law judges that do our special education um, cases. So I enjoyed administrative law, have all saved, but didn't so much in law school, so I thought, oh, this isn't what I thought I signed up for. Um, but I am, 90% of my practices is in mediation or alternative dispute resolution, and that is probably where my practice really landed. Um, I do a little bit of litigation in the administrative world, but I love mediations, I love alternative dispute resolution. I love when people get along, um, so mediation is the best way to do that. Um, and I. Most of our cases, I'm not sure if Adam would say the same thing, but most of our cases settle uh, before we even get to a trial. So um, that's why I chose education law. And I love my colleagues. Andrew Mana that I work with, my partner, he is phenomenal and told me that I couldn't go anywhere else and kind of swoop me in, and that's where I've been. So what's a, a learning opportunity that each of you attorneys had in law school that you felt really benefited you? I'm, I'm hearing a lot of internships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So that was tough because COVID happened. <laughs> so my like, last year was COVID. Yeah. The, the end of my last year was COVID, but I think internship was a huge one. Um, and just getting out in your summers and looking for those positions that you want to be in. Um, and um, a lot of those are paid, unlike what undergraduate is. So you're looking for paid positions to get out and work. Some government work isn't paid, but it is still the experience that you, if you're trying to test the waters and you have everything on your plate that you like and you want to start weeding that out, those are the great opportunities to do that and working with folks and kind of just understanding the difference between attorneys and how they practice and who do you want to be mentored by and who do you want to be brought up under. Um, I think that is the most valuable. I think getting into government work too, there's like the 10 year student loan forgiveness for public service. So if you do come out with a ton of loans, that is, an, I have a lot of people, we just hired a prosecutor that just finished her 10 years. Um, so that was awesome for her and she has a lot of experience now. I also think during the summer, they will put you through a lot. Like they were like, we need help here. Mm -hmm. And you probably get to experience a lot more doing some government work too. It's like, hey, here's this file, go take care take of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> go figure it out. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any, uh, Adam, how many, or were there any special opportunities that you had during law school that really uh, shaped your uh, journey as a journey? During law school, yes, it was the internship at the prosecutor's office. And then in undergrad, it was the internship at the prosecutor's office where I grew up at, just knowing that's what I wanted to do, at least. Uh, and having uh, a mentor in the attorney that was up in my hometown. It's one of my references I used when I applied to an early admission. And uh, so that's another aspect of it. And then you get to know if you see yourself doing it. Uh, it's not like it is on you know, TV shows. And then during law school, it was just being in the courtroom uh, and you know, bench trials, jury trials, prepping individuals, handling suppressions having defense attorneys get mad at you it just pushes your threshold and you kind of smile a little bit but that's a, you get out in the then you tackle the bar and once you get out you realize you have some a skill set to sell yourself when you're applying for jobs but uh, and then also you know in undergrad i always say outside of any academic programs that uh, you have just job opportunities i bartended at roadhouse here in muncie and i learned how to talk to people face-to-face -face conversations uh, when you deal with clients you learn how to do with that uh, that really helped me as well because you have to create small talk and uh, if you have an angry customer that you get to, how to calm them down you got a lot of uh, angry clients sometimes uh, hopefully not but you, you run into it so that's something i think goes under the bridge a little bit but was definitely beneficial for me uh, as well as the internships if i may because i forgot to sell the clinics because the clinics are great i am kenny um i wrapped it up in my internship talk but it is also a good opportunity to get involved in clinics and get that practice, get a folder handed to you, this is what we're working on today or this week, and uh, running with the clinics as well was helpful. Very good. Now the last couple questions I have, and then we're going to turn it over to you guys for um, questions and answers, but I do have a couple more questions for the current law students. Uh, what did you do, what was most helpful for you in preparing for the LSAT? What did you find to be the most helpful thing? Yeah, so I initially tried to self-study, um, and it wasn't working for me. I was getting extremely overwhelmed, um, so I decided to invest, and I did take an LSAT prep course. I personally took Test Masters, um, and I originally chose that because they had an in-person option in Indianapolis, and then COVID happened. So I did end up doing it online, but I loved it because it was structured for you video lectures week by week told you what you needed to be studying and had like unlimited resources as far as practice questions and practice tests and personally it is expensive i'll just give that disclaimer um but personally for me the investment was totally worth it um i only took the lsat once was very happy with my score got me scholarships so if you're nervous about putting the money up front um you know if you have the means to do so i would definitely recommend it because it definitely paid off in the long run for me. And it was nice to just like have someone else tell me what to do each day versus like being overwhelmed with so many options of like different ways to study and things to study. I did the exact same thing. So I bought Mike Kim's LSAT prep book, which was awesome. If you're, it, it's easy just to, to find a section and turn to if you're bored and you can just bust them out for 20, 25 minutes. Um, I also did an LSAT prep course, which was awesome because same thing. I wanted somebody to kind of 
coach me through it and, and walk me through the process rather than trying to figure it out on, your, on, on my own. Um, and I, we were talking before the event started about uh, Khan Academy being, that's changing, but I was big into Khan Academy. But I know a couple of my friends, they used LSAT Demon, I believe is what it's called, and it was a super, they really liked it. I never tried it myself, but Khan Academy was great for me because they've got uh, tutorial videos and tons of practice problems. And my biggest advice is to, it's hard to set aside three hours of your day, but if you bust out as much practice exams as possible, super beneficial, I thought, because it's hard to sit still for three hours. Um, so the more you practice that, the more you do it, the better off you'll be. So Matthew, that three hours a day, for what period of time did you do that? Um, I would go to Bracken at probably six o'clock at night, from six to nine, usually when I would do it. For like 10 weeks? So how many oh, weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Um, I, so I took my first LSAT in August, um, and I started prepping for it in May, I think, so. I was the same. I had like an internship over the summer after my junior year, and I spent that whole summer, um, I would work my internship during the day, and then evenings and weekends I would study for the LSAT and took it in August. Yep. Also sounds like Barbara. What was I was going to say, I took, <laughs> I took Kaplan, because um, I'm not that old, so I do remember. Um, and it was it was like a thousand dollars, I'm pretty sure, and I, my parents made me pay for it. Um, but I raised my score, I think, 10 points, and it, I, it made me find out that I really liked Kaplan, and I did, I think, use that for bar prep because it is very similar. Good luck, because it's longer, <laughs> and it's a whole summer, but by the end, it's just have so much up there. Great. All right, one last question for Matthew and Becca, and then um, we will have your questions. Um, what, what, what are you doing to balance law school and the rest of your life? Um, you have to be super, super efficient with your time. Uh, make a game plan. Um, it's healthy to set aside a couple hours of your day not to focus on law school. I live right across the street, so it's kind of non, non-stop for me, but I like it, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, my daily plan, some people either study super early in the morning before class or super late at night. What I like to do is come home from class at five o'clock, decompress, work out for an hour, and then do my homework, and it usually takes me three, three or four hours a night, so I'm usually, I try to be done before midnight, um, and then my first class in the morning doesn't start until 10.30, so I'll get up at seven and just review my notes, because I, you, you, you will usually have two or three classes a day, so I use my morning time just to reread my notes rather than reading rereading the whole material again um, just in preparation for the for the class I'm about to take um, but I I don't do anything Thursday nights I get done and I that's my one day where I'm like I'm not doing anything I'll go to beat ups with friends watch Thursday night football and that's kind of my my balance because um, much like they've all said we most of your friends are going to be fellow law students, so it's nice to not talk about law. And fortunately for me, I'm, I'm from the Muncie area, so it's only an hour away, so I would try to come home either on sun, Sunday mornings, hang out at home for for a day, and then head back to India at 5 o'clock at night because it's only an hour here. Mm. So. What about you, Becca? Um, I know you walk your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I do. I think spending time with animals, if you have them, do that there's just something about it that's like irreplaceable but to be honest I feel like I did better about balancing my time my 1L year and 2L year you like the doors to a lot of opportunities open up um, so I would say do what I did not do and try to pick one or two things that you're interested in um, this semester specifically I'm like taking all the classes and I'm working part-time in a law firm and I'm doing an externship and I'm doing multiple clubs and I'm doing law review and it's just a lot um, and I'm not saying I regret any of those things because they've all been awesome opportunities but I think you'll hit a point where it becomes almost impossible to balance like your personal life with all of your work things when you're doing so many school slash work things so if you can try to remember this when you're like 2L and 3L years roll around and try to pick and choose um, particular things even if there's like so many opportunities and you want to do it all um, try to pick and choose 
And I also will say, kind of like Matthew said, you can sort of choose when you want to do your studying. I know some people who treat it like a 9 to 5 or an 8 to 5, and they get all their studying done in that time, Monday through Friday, like in between classes. Other people do their homework on the weeknights, mm -hmm. um, like a Monday night for Tuesday, Tuesday night for Wednesday. Um, some people would hate this, but I personally use my weekends. Um, so on weeknights, I can come home from work or class and not have to worry about it. Um, so I'll spend my Saturdays and Sundays doing homework, but it's, it's really um, choose your own adventure. So. In your 1L year, you'll have a writing class. Um, and I, you're in law review, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's also doing a lot of uh, writing as well. Um, I use my weekends for my writing class. Um, if first semester, it's you're not writing as an advocate. You're kind of neutral. So it's it, writing in law school is a totally different language than what you're used to. So it takes some some getting used to. But I use my weekends for like my appellate brief. So I, I'll, I'll try to do a nine to five. I'll go in on Friday and Saturday because we don't have class on Friday, and try to. I'll be there from 8 until 2, and then try to use the rest of my Saturday night to not do anything law school. But sometimes you have to. And I was told this kind of saying, she said she's super, super busy. I am too, but not like a 2L. They always say 1L, they scare you to death, which is true. 2L, they work you to death, and 3L, they bore you to death. So, <laughs> I've heard that too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very is true. true. Yes, right. right. <laughs> very true. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, questions from you all? Yes. Yeah, I kind of had a question for Becca, because I kind of have like a similar path to you. I got into it later. So what kind of challenges like presented themselves to you when you got to law school because you didn't have a legal studies background? I think when you go into law school, you just, which everyone should be doing this, but you're going to have to pay extra attention to the things going on around you. Um, when you go in for orientation, they're going to teach you like how to write a case brief. And I took the most detailed notes because before that day, I had no idea what a case brief was. When I was like going to law school, I would tell people and they'd be like, oh, if you need outlines or briefs, let me know. I had no clue what those were. Um, so when you go into school, just pay attention to the things that are happening around you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, two L's and three L's, they might seem like so scary, but just approach one even that seems a little friendly and have them be your point person. People are so willing to share their briefs and their outlines and give you just general advice about like classes to take and things like that. So just keep your eyes and your ears open. It is scary going into it feeling like other people are a step ahead but the truth is like every single person coming in on their first day of 1L is like equally as scared so don't let it face you. Great question. And, um, Catherine? Um, this is more for people who've already like got their JD or, or a 2L but for those like interest classes what was like your favorite kind of interest class or did you feel that there was ones that were for your specific interests? Like, was it diverse for you, enough for you? Yeah. Uh, I could name a couple off the top of my head. Uh, litigation practice, uh, contract drafting. Um, I did not take trial practice, which was a Saturday morning, but that I had a lot of friends take that, and it was very uh, helpful for them. It really is that hands-on. Um, you're doing a lot of reading and writing, as you've kind of heard already. So it's like getting out of that world of, okay, I'm reading all these legal cases, I'm briefing all these legal cases, and doing something interesting that I like to do that is hands-on, kind of breaks up that monotony of reading and writing. We, we actually did, what is it, bio, what is it called, bioethics? Something. So it was like health. Yeah, they still have that. Yeah. Something health-related, um, yeah. And so me and her actually did a presentation on a Grey's Anatomy episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't until you said that. And then there was like a 24-hour final that we, we stayed at my house and we took together. Yeah. So I think like finding a group of people that have similar interests as you and like doing those things, but anything that can translate to the real world. I, like you said, the drafting classes and like the practical classes because you're going to learn how to think about the law. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have to like do that very often. <laughs> I write and I talk to people and I mean you have to sell yourself kind mm -hmm. of. So I think any anything that teaches you how to speak and write um, is just going to benefit you greatly. Other questions? Yes. Um, 
My question is more for Adam. How, because I remember you saying that you um, started to get burnt out towards the end of your undergrad years. Um, how did you manage all the workload that you did during your undergrad years? Because um, I want to try to appeal to law schools as um, best as I can. So my plan was to do legal studies uh, major and two minors. And I'm already facing a lot of burnt out and struggling with juggling a social life. So how did you manage the workload? Managing the workload, it was just being disciplined. Uh, my brother was a senior at Ball State at the college, uh, business college, so I picked his brain a lot on just being disciplined with studying at Bracken. Uh, and also the fraternity we had, our own state room there. So most of the individuals I hung out with, we were there studying. Uh, in legal studies, it was, it, it became, you kind of see, you take good notes, you see you have an exam coming up in three or four weeks, and then I'd lock down for that week, 10, seven, 10 days prior, start studying. Um, and then for like the aspect of undergrad, it's one of those aspects I don't know, but I was trying to make myself appeal to law school as best as I can, but ultimately, in my opinion, it's your GPA and your LSAT. Always take what you want in your interests, but uh, I was caught up in my minors. That's why I went an extra semester. Would I have done that? Ball State probably doesn't want to hear it, but I wouldn't. But I enjoyed it. I just it felt I felt one year back because I had I graduated in December 2014. I had to start the following uh, fall, but just become disciplined. Figure out what works for you. Write it down a timeline. Here's what I'm going to do. You know, if you have to go to bed, it, it's. I have a toddler right now, so it's, a lot, it's very similar to that. And it, it prepared me for that. So I'm leaving at 7 to drop her off. I drop 7.30, drop, uh, driving all the way to work, and then I get home at 6, get her ready for bed at 7.30. You just got to figure out how to manage your time. And if, it's just, I'd, I'd be very disciplined. 6 o'clock, wake up, I'm going to bed at 10. And if I was overwhelmed, it's it's one of those things that you just try to figure out. Don't put too much on your plate if you're not with your classes. Uh, and if it's a situation where you need to take summer classes, take summer classes so you're not at 18 credit hours. You'd be at 15, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, or I take an online class so I had a little bit more time where I was off campus. I could focus on that. Uh, and but that's it's one of those things growing up in life you have to figure it out yourself sometimes where I'd ask my dad or my brother how are you, how are you disciplined with your time I mean, what's your how do you handle these things and I asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. I probably was annoying at times but squeaky wheel gets grease but also have fun college is fun right like you're gonna have free time in college like nap during the day you will never get to do that again <laughs> Abby and I actually talked about that on the way here of like yes. walking through campus and thinking, man, I'm heading back to my dorm, taking a nap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, don't, you don't have to be perfect to get into law school. Mm -hmm. Like, if you care about it and write a good statement and your GPA is, you know, good enough and your LSAT's good enough, like, have fun now, too, because it just yeah. gets kind of... I have, a, to I have a toddler, is. too, and that, that all resonated well. I have a two-year-old at that home as well. And, just the the monotony of a day can get you burnt out too and it's in the practice as well it's in law school it's an undergrad as well so learning how to manage that now is better than learning it in law school or learning it you know later in life um, so I, I echo everything they said this is easier said than done but try not to get discouraged um, my 1L experience so far is if you're if you're gonna go to law school the majority of people are super type A. They're they're, you know, organized, um, and they're usually my my one L class. My cohort's about 100 people. It's all all 100 of us were in the top of our graduating classes in high school in college. So having all of us together, I mean, it's 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 not competitive. Um, like like Becca said, it's really not. Um, at the end of the day, grades, you know, there's there's only a certain amount of grades that can go out. It's not like inherently, can, like nobody's gonna be like right. fighting each other, but there is an air right. of competition right. because yeah. of the way that the curve works. Right, like, so. like nobody's gonna hide a book though, if you need, like that's not, <laughs> yes, that's not exactly. that doesn't happen at our school. Um, but I have to t remind myself all the time too, to not be discouraged. Um, and the the diversity of people there, it's, it's so broad, it would shock you, like my, 
it's funny because we were just talking about this before I, I came up this morning. Um, my best friend is a 27 year old with a toddler. And talk, again, from my perspective, I'm like, talk about how, what, a, what an incredible journey he's had. Um, so he has a child. He played college football at the Air Force Academy, served, and now he's in law school. And he thinks what I'm doing is more difficult because I'm 23, live alone, moved away for the first time. But I'm like, dude, no way. Like, your, your journey is a lot more, you know? So you just always have to kind of check yourself. Like, you're, you're there for a reason. And, yeah, you're gonna get burned out a little bit, but it's just, it's okay to just tell yourself just not to get discouraged. Especially, and I know I'm not a panelist, but I, I, I have to say this, especially after that first semester of tests, you're gonna yes. feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I am. I was calling my manager at the restaurant where I worked and told her, I need to come back, I'm feeling out of law school. <laughs> <laughs> I, and she was like, you always have a home here, but I think you're probably okay. <laughs> when I got my grades, they were all A's and B's. But I was sure that I had done very, very poorly because I just put so much stress on myself that didn't need to be there. So you don't stress like out that. that oh, yeah. I did the exact same experience. I had, a, I had a breakdown after my first contracts final. Because they're, they're three and a half hours long. And I had yeah. Professor Sullivan, who is on, yeah. I currently have him for, for contracts. He's a former Supreme Court justice. So his expectations are super high. And I thought I bombed it. I was like, oh. That was terrible. Got my grades back. It was a B plus, and I'm laughing because I'm like, they had to have miscalculated the, the grades. So I still don't know how I did that, but I, but I did. Yeah. My, after my first year or my first semester, I didn't between Christmas break. I didn't look at my grades. They were coming in. All my friends were talking about their grades. I didn't look at them until the day I went back for the second semester. I had such wow. discipline of I don't want to know. I don't care if I if I they let me walk back through the doors. I pass. I guess. So. <laughs> Anyone? More questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> so I was thinking about taking a couple of years um, off after undergrad and maybe going into being a paralegal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I should take a couple of years off or just jump straight into law school. Um, did you all jump straight into law school? I did. I think everybody here. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys like? Do you guys recommend doing that? Do you guys like have any regrets jumping straight in? I don't have any regrets just because I knew that's what I, I knew that's where I wanted to be. Um, but I had a lot of friends and I think Abby had uh, our friend group. Uh, we had some that went to paralegal, went to legal work. Um, got more practice and then went back to law school and I don't think they have any regrets either. So I think it just kind of is what works for you. and. Um, Especially but, if you're burnt out right now, like maybe seeing some of it, putting it into practice, it'll only make you better, I think, mm -hmm. for law school. Just don't wait too long so you like, kind of forget how to school. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. There's no right answer. I definitely think it's personal preference. Mm -hmm. uh, my One of my best friends from Ball State, Haley, um, she's a 1L as well. She's a night student. She graduated in December, um, and she had enough credits in high school that she she graduated a whole academic year before me, um, and she worked as a paralegal for a full year. Um, and I think just talking to her, she would have she would have made the same decision if she could do it over again because she had that experience of working in a law firm and come like when it comes to legal research and writing, it's, it's second nature to her now. It's a lot easier than me who I never did it because I was paid through JD. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's just personal preference for sure. So I'm an international student, I went to, school, to law school in France, and I was wondering what type of exams you guys have, how frequent is it, what type of exams is it? Now, like as practicing attorneys, or when you... All of it, I want to know. Okay. Uh, well, you have the LSAT to get into law school. Okay. Uh, and then you have the bar exam after you get out of law school. You have to pass the bar exam to be a practicing attorney. Mm -hmm. We don't have any exams anymore as practicing attorneys, but you do have continued legal education, which is courses that really you get to pick uh, that you're interested in. Uh, and if you, you don't have to pick the same stuff you're practicing to go to, I've done quite a bit of legal education outside of education law. Um, so we don't have exams after law school, after the bar exam, but um, just that continued legal education. Yeah, so I don't know if you'd have to go to law school or not, if you could just test it. I'm sorry. So, I mean, because you said you went to law school in yes. France, so I don't know if you could just take the bar or if you have to have a 
I've checked that it's only in California and New York. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you probably yeah. have to get a lot of conversation. She might, yeah. she might um, right be an LLM. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. a different okay. degree, but if you wanted to like practice in Indiana, you would probably have to get a JD. Yeah. I actually know a lawyer in France. Mm. <laughs> he is French. Oh. <laughs> and he got also licensed past the bar in California. So he's, so he never went to school. So he did the California thing, and he, but he's mostly in France. Paris. They never, he only was in a French law school. Yeah. Cool. I know, he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's friends of a friend. Anyway. If any of you haven't met with, and I see some new faces, so some of you haven't met with me yet. If you have, you know, I am the pre-law advisor. Again, my name is Joanna Maple. JP Maple at bsu.edu. If you haven't met with me, send me an email and we can talk anytime you have questions along the way about the process. Okay? I know I've met with a lot of you already, <laughs> and some of you more than once, but <laughs> yeah, I think that's that what I do. I mean, piece. that's part of I, I, I teach here, but then I'm also the pre law advisor, and as many times as, as you want to talk to me, we can certainly do that. Yeah, and do that, and do that, yeah. and also if you want to contact, I'm a, I'm free yeah. to email me you, as well. I'm you're all on LinkedIn. Yeah. So how many of you have a LinkedIn already? LinkedIn profile? Make it. Did we make those? <laughs> we made those in yeah. Professor Gross yeah. yeah. class. Yeah. 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 Um, so I hear that's the kind of thing. So having a LinkedIn profile, if you have no idea what you're doing after this process, and if you don't have family that's helped you in the past. You know, obviously I've got three kids, well, this is what their mom does, so guess what, they've had the LinkedIn profile since they were 18. <laughs> Come talk to me, and I'll help you kind of navigate some of this, talk to your professors, but then get connected with them on LinkedIn, and, and save these pieces of paper with their names on them, because yeah. you never know when you might want to talk to one of them again. I can't tell you what a small, I mean, what's the odds that I know a, a, a friend, mm -hmm. in, Freddy, uh, in Paris, who's a lawyer. So you just never know when you're going to, maybe you need to connect with somebody. I would say if you want resume help, I can help. The Career Center will help. Uh, if you want to talk about grad school, I'm also glad to help. Get a hobby. Pick a hobby and hobby. My daughter finished here. She was a nursing and pre-med double major. She finished two years ago. She was stressed out all the time. She started scheduling and she learned how to schedule in self-care. She's like, you know what? Today, I'm, my, I, her version of self-care was cleaning her room sometimes. Clean my room and get organized. And she felt better when her, she slept better when her room was organized. My middle kid, he's like a free-for-all, he's a musician. He's had to really get disciplined on creating a schedule because that is an inherent to his, his life. Like, he's just not a schedule maker. Now he is because he's got to, had to do that. Um, the scholarships, so the ICLEO, ICLEO program is huge, big opportunity. You can find all about the ICLEO on their website, Google ICLEO. The Ball State Scholar Program, the Law Scholar Program, we had 19 applicants that our faculty were considering. Two of the 19 get it. Like, what kind of odds are that? Pretty good odds. Pretty good, I mean, that's decent odds for sure. Um, the Criminal Justice Criminology Department is having an event on Thursday, um, April the 1st, or oh, April 11th, and they're doing the law school prep kind of sessions because there's a lot of law classes in CJC. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just go to the Criminal Justice Department's website, you can find out the timing. It's over in the Student Center. Um, student organizations, get involved, pick something. And the other thing I would say is get to know the culture. I think the culture at IU McKinney is different than a lot of law schools. So although I didn't go to law school, when I went to get my MPA, I looked at IU. It was School of Public and Environmental Affairs, SPIA. Yeah. Don't tell them I said this. But it was SPIA. <laughs> I looked at University of Kentucky and University of Tennessee. I went to each of those schools. I, uh, IU SPIA was my number one. It's like top five in the country. Yeah, yeah. I got there, and this was in 1992. The professors were not nice. They didn't care about me, and it was super competitive and cutthroat. And I'm like, I don't, that doesn't really feel like me. I, I like to get along with people. So then I went to Kentucky and Tennessee, met with some students, met with the professors, and I fell in love with both, and I ended up going to Kentucky because it was a few hours closer to home. Um, so if you can visit and get to know the culture of the place that you're looking at, I think that's really important. And job shadow, you can always reach out to attorneys. How many of you just sat down and talked to an attorney just like you just cold called them and reached out and said, hey, would you, I'm a student of Ball State. 
most people like to talk about what they do. And if they don't, well, you don't want to talk to them anyway. So if you need help building connections, I think all these folks know people in different disciplines, different specialty practice areas. I'm sure they can help connect you. So you can either part-time work, job shadow, internship, all of that. And in terms of burnout, focus on the long term. Like, vision board, whatever it is to help you realize that the choices I'm making on how I'm spending my time today from 3.30 to 5 is going to impact and help me in the future. I think that can help you get a little nudge if you feel like you're sitting in a hot hole sometimes. Those are the last comments I think I had in terms of wrap up. Um, I'd like to thank our panelists for their co uh, coming today. And our facilitators. I'm not sure if you're allowed to have balls to Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, they stay around for a few minutes after if you just want to talk privately. We're in a little small group of them. Appreciate you coming. Turn in your yellow papers. You just put them on the desk up there. We'll be able to then give out a report to your professors to say that you were here. Um, and I know I think there was a sign-in sheet for your students, participation points. Any last-minute cookies? Take cookies. Real nice. Thank you all for being here, and thanks to our panelists. Thank you.